Oh, hello. Great, I can hear you. Hi, Moses. Good I'm afternoon. doing well. Nice to meet you. I can hear you clearly. All right. Nice to meet you too. Um, you can hear me? Yes, clearly. All right, great. Um yes, um uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh it's my pleasure to be here today to host this event on how to start and uh, on how to own your expertise and start speaking at uh WordPress events. I'm Sebuf Moses, um, uh, WordPress uh, Meetup Lead in Massacre and uh, WordCamp Massacre 2023 Lead Organizer. And I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you who have taken the time to join us here today. Uh, we are excited to have Mary Job as our speaker, who is an expert in this field and has uh, graciously agreed to share her knowledge and expertise with us. And I hope you will find uh, today's event informative and inspiring and that you walk away with valuable insights on how to own your expertise and start speaking at what brace events. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, Mary, thank you for joining us today and uh, could you please tell us a little bit about yourself, where you live and your work in the WordPress community and how you got involved. Awesome. Thank you, Moses. Uh, thank you, everyone, for having me. I'm glad to be here. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to, can I share my screen so that I can dive right into it? Sure. Would that, okay, great. Oh, I think you need to enable screen sharing. Okay, so I'm just going to introduce my myself first uh, and then get to meet everyone. All right, so my name is Mary Job. I live in Nigeria most of the time. Uh, uh, I work at Paid Memberships Pro. It's a WordPress membership plugin uh, for WordPress. And I own uh, HowGeotech, where we build websites, uh, Bifumware, where we sell WordPress hosting, and uh, Uwani Ob, uh, where we teach uh, digital skills for free to young women and teenagers. Uh, did I miss any work? Uh, yes, I, I forgot to mention, I also own WP Slay. We do WordPress support uh, over there. Uh, okay, so I like traveling. As I said earlier, I like traveling. So I spend most of my time uh, traveling to other countries. I like backpacking. Uh, it's an opportunity to meet, uh, explore, and see new places and also speak at new events uh, for me. So that's the brief background about me. Uh, every other thing about me, you can find on my website, maryjob.com. Uh, so let's start. First, I'd like to meet everybody here. Uh, for those of us that are already present, uh, please tell me your name, uh, what you do, and your WordPress experience. Who wants to go first? <laughs> I think Moses, you already went. <laughs> right, yeah. Hi, Shaba. Yes, faintly, but yes. All right. Um, I'm learning WordPress, so 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 I'm learning WordPress, what we do and what our WordPress experience is. Uh, if you don't want to speak, you can also put it in the chat box on the side. So I'm going to type the, the this there. Or Moses, if you could help type this in there. Uh, for anybody who is joining a new or who's joining a fresh, they should please tell us their name, what they do, and their WordPress experience. I'm going to share my screen now. I believe everybody can see my screen now. Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. So I already introduced myself. Uh, let me copy this and put it in the chat so that anybody who's joining us can can do this, can can tell us their name, 
uh, the award process. I'm, I'm looking for the, if you can do it, Moses, I'll be uh, glad. I can find the chat box, okay. So I'm going to go right in and just start speaking since we are recording as well. We're currently here. Right, so I'm going to speak up on this from a place of personal experience. What got me to start speaking or what made me get on the stage to start speaking? So I joined the WordPress community in 2015. 2015, 2016. At that point, I had just started using WordPress and I was looking for a community of people where I could ask questions because I was making a lot of mistakes. I started using WordPress to build sites for, for customers. And I was making mistakes and I was looking for a community to reach out to where I could find people who are experts and I could ask them questions. But here's what happened. I discovered there was a Lagos community, right? Uh, they were not active. The last time they did a meetup was in 2012. Uh, so I, I wrote to the owner of the group, the person who started the group, and I wrote to the WordPress community to say, uh, I'm interested in joining this meetup. Are they going to be hosting any events anytime soon? And they said, oh, yes, they've been trying to host events for a while. Now, in the process of all this, I also discovered make.wordpress.org. I'll go back to that later. I'll point out to that later. I discovered make, and I was like, oh, wow, there are so many ways you could get involved with WordPress. Perhaps if I got involved in WordPress, maybe I'd be able to find a community of people where I could ask questions about WordPress, and they could help me on my own journey. Uh, one thing led to another, and I was made the co-organizer for the Lagos Meetup Group. Now, at this point, it is it is uh, noteworthy to say that I did not have WordPress. Like I don't, I didn't have WordPress as practice at the level that I have now. Back then, this was I had just stumbled on WordPress then. So, I literally had zero knowledge except for the fact that it's an open source software. You can use it on .com or .org. This was all I knew about WordPress at that point. So. I I joined the, the group as a co-organizer, and then I realized that to meet people, I had to host events, right? So I started hosting events. I scheduled the first events. I have a, I have a, I, I like documenting my story. So I'll, I'll, I'll also make reference to this much later on. If you look at this slide, I want to go to the very, very beginning to show you the first meetup that I ever uh, hosted. It was me and, Okay, I, do, I don't think what Google Photos shows this in a, like from beginning to end in a chronology. Yeah, because, okay, I can't find that particular one. Anyway, let me continue. So um, we started hosting meetups and the first one, it was just two people that showed up and the co-organizer after the event. It was quite funny because I had no idea what to speak about. All I knew, like I said, was just what WordPress was and what it could do, not even all it could do, you know. But we had the first event and it was good. And then we had a second one and a third one. I'll share the link to this photo. This is photos of all the meetups I ever hosted uh, in Lagos, right? This was the second or the third meetup. But the point I'm trying to make here is I had to start getting in front of people to talk about a subject that. I didn't think I had expertise in, but because of the drive to meet other people and to get people involved, because at a lot of the meetup, we noticed a lot of people were beginners just like myself. So I would go research on a topic and create a slide for the topic and tell myself, okay, if I can understand how it works and if I can understand what it does, I mean, I can speak about it. And then if there are other people who are also experts at that meetup present, I can call on them to expand on what I said, which is what I did uh, back then. And that worked for me. And that was what led me to my first, to apply to speak at my first uh, speaking engagement in Cape Town for WordCamp Cape Town in 2017. I that I would say that was my first time getting in front of a real audience, so to or an informal or uh, sorry, very formal audience, so to say. Because uh, prior to that, I think the only speaking I ever did was presentation in schools. Uh, so let me go back to my slides. So that's how I started speaking at uh, uh, meetups and and and, uh, and and word camps. Now I I I I see this from this perspective that everybody knows something. Everybody knows something. There is something that you know that you're so good at that you can share with the world. Because most times people say, but I'm not an expert on this. But you know something. Now, this brings me to this 
next point that says that there are over 20 areas of WordPress that you, you can contribute to. And that takes me to make. When I discovered this page then, I told myself, I said, wow. I even had no idea what core design at this point in my life. I didn't even know what HTML was at that point in my life, you know, and, and I saw all of this and I was like, what am I going to do with all of this? And then I saw community that was familiar. I mean, I mean, that was me hosting events. So I said, okay, I could do this. And then I, I, I joined the community formally. I uh, applied to be a deputy, started getting more involved in WordPress. So one of the ways that you could also get yourself to start speaking at events is by contributing to WordPress. I mean, if you're contributing to WordPress, you would already be comfortable. You would already feel it's safe. I think I like to think very much that the WordPress is a pretty safe community where uh, nobody judges the other person for what they know or what they do. I mean, it's even in the bylaws, it's in the laws for when you're starting a middle group. One of the laws is you don't discriminate regardless based on gender, race, financial status, nothing. You, we don't discriminate. So if you're able to, you, you don't have to say, okay, no, I want to speak about how to build a site or I want to speak about how to design a site or develop or build a team or something. There are so many other ways that you could contribute to WordPress and speak about your own. Everybody knows something. I always opine that. I don't believe in the fact that nobody knows anything. If it is writing that you know about, go ahead and talk about that. And one of the things that I also I like to emphasize is the fact that the, the, the foundation of the WordPress community as a whole is designed to be very informal. And this we do very much at our meetups. That culture was something that we built in. At the beginning of our meetups, I would let people know that, please feel free to be very informal. This is not a suit and tie event where everybody is uptight and everybody is looking at each other and everybody is looking for faults. No, this is a very laid back environment. So if your organizers, I'm sure they already do that, I create that environment where everybody feels everybody feels uh, are, are safe and in this informal setting, they don't feel like somebody's going to look at them like, oh, you said something wrong and then, you know, bring them down. If they create the space already, then it means you already have a thriving foundation. You ever have, have a thriving space to be able to share uh, what you know, because like I said, everybody knows something, right? So what are the steps that I would suggest that you take? I, I would say it begins with your local community. It really begins with your local community. At your local WordPress events, whether it is virtual or physical, come out and speak about something. And when people think of speaking, they tend to think of, ah, I'm going to be speaking for 30 minutes, one hour, two hours. Can I really hold a conversation for that long? No. What if you're coming out to just share uh, something as 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 straightforward or as simple as how to write a blog post. That is you sharing. It doesn't matter uh, the, the duration. It could be for 10 minutes. Like at the point in our meetups, we had, because we wanted to keep people entertained. So we had this slot in the middle of our meetup where somebody will come up on, uh, on the podium to, for 10, five to 10 minutes to talk about how to do a specific something with WordPress or how to achieve anything with WordPress. That was something we did. And that, that really got other people to be involved. So you could start at something like that. You know what, you tell your organizer, I want to talk about the particular thing that I discovered while I was working with WordPress. This could be something for 10 minutes. And your organizer says, okay, that's fine. You already know the rules of our community. We don't promote, uh, uh, we don't promote businesses. We don't, uh, we don't uh, like sell hard time, so to say. But if you're speaking uh, about something, or if you're talking about something that other people would benefit, yes, sure, they allow you to come on the podium and you share. Now, when you start at that, also look at all the communities that are outside the WordPress communities. I mean, everybody, like I said, even most startup companies use WordPress as their landing page. Look at those communities outside. Extend your reach. Attend those events. You don't, maybe if you, don't, if you don't feel comfortable speaking at their events, that's fine. But attend their events. See how things are done in other places. See how you can improve. Look at other speakers. Look at other neighboring countries around you. Because sometimes we feel so shy to speak in front of our own crowd. We're like, okay, you know what? If I'm speaking outside to people that don't know me, then maybe my fear of being judged will be, will be reduced. So look at neighboring countries, look at the word camps that if they're hosting word camps or if they have meetups, like I said, COVID has made things easier. Almost everything is done virtually now. So you can start virtually. Do you know that you can also speak at, at meetup uh, groups? 
outside our continent. Like you can speak at the Los Angeles meetup. You can speak at the Cape Town meetup. You can reach out to the organizers of all these meetups to say, but you know what? I want to speak about a particular subject uh, at your meetup. And you let them know, this is what I want to talk about. Everybody knows something. You don't have to wait until you're an expert. I don't consider myself an expert right now at all. Uh, so you don't have to wait until you, you have, you're have an expert. What I do tell people is, and this is what I did when I started hosting uh, uh, what press meetups in Lagos. And I, I, I spoke about SEO, even though I had no idea what SEO was. And this, this was what I did. I simply picked the topic, researched upon the topic, created my slides, and then tried to implement some of those things on on my WordPress demo site. Like, okay, uh, uh, how do you even how do you even optimize a page, right? By practicing what you you want to speak at, that also makes you speak from a point of expertise. Yeah, if you practice what you want to speak about, like when we when we have somebody working for us and the person has no WordPress not that the first thing I tell them to do is you need to download local on your system and you need to actually uh, uh, practice what you're talking about. For instance, we have somebody who writes for us. Uh, she doesn't write in WordPress. She was writing outside WordPress. But then I believe that you can write on a topic without knowing how to do that. Then I mean, if you're telling your readers how to customize the WordPress login page, if you yourself don't know how to customize a login page, that's a problem. So it's not just about researching and then writing and then wanting to speak. It's about being able to do or attempting to do. You don't have to get it right. The attempt alone counts. So that when you're speaking in front of your audience, they you you're speaking from a point of expertise. You're not speaking from a point of I just read it and I'm uh, and I'm pouring it down on you. No, you're speaking from a point of I have attempted to do it and this was my result, even if it wasn't perfect. Trust me, you find somebody else in that space who attempted it successfully and who comes up to say, oh yeah, this is what you were supposed to do or this is what you missed. So. Look at local WordPress events, share your journey, sharing your, I mean, if you think that, okay, you know what, I don't have, I don't have, I don't have uh, a particular topic that I'm an expert on that I want to speak on. I think we should stop using the word expert on. Uh, what about your journey into WordPress? That's something you can share with people to inspire other people. That's something that I did at the beginning uh, when I was speaking at other word camps. I was speaking about my own journey to inspire other people to get into WordPress. I remember my talk in, I think it was Mombasa, was WordPress is the easiest way to get into tech. That's me speaking about my journey and how people can actually leverage on WordPress to get into IT, the IT uh, 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 space that we have today. So share your journey. And one of the things that is also important is to document your journey. And this, if you're already working in, with WordPress, then it means that you have plans to have your own personal website. I always tell people that the, the first half of my journey in WordPress, I was I was referencing my blog, my free WordPress blog, as, uh, as where you could find uh, information about me and my works. Because for me, I couldn't afford to, to own a personal domain and maintain it with hosting and all of that. So I referenced my, because people would say, ah, but I don't have money to pay for hosting or to be paying for domain. Start with a free blog. It's there. Yeah, it's right there for you to create a free account. It's right there for you to, to show. You can have pages on there. You can have my portfolio. You can have... Uh, people, you can have people contact you on there. There is absolutely nothing wrong with starting with a .wordpress.com domain because people would say, ah, but you won't be taken seriously. That is false. Most of the, my journey and the places that I was able to access, I did that without having the mirrorjob.com. No, I did that having the mirrorjob.wordpress.com. So don't, don't think of, don't, don't limit yourself and think, Oh no, but I, I I don't think I'm able to get into that. So practice, start practicing, start practicing in your local community. Even WordCamps are said to be informal events. If you go to the WordCamp page, it, the, the definition says WordCamps are informal events. At our own WordCamps that we did, they were pretty informal. It was just done in a fancy place, but it, they were very, very informal. People were down to it. People couldn't, talk. it was as if we were having a meetup with a very large number. That was the difference. Uh, okay, so document your journey is very important and document your work because when people say, when people ask me, oh, where can I find you and your works online? I just send them to my website that I know that is very detailed and contains everything about me and my work so far. That adds to the S passes that you're looking for. It adds to people 
uh, attaching an expertise, a level of expertise to you because they, oh, this person is serious. This person means business. This person is not here to play. I mean, if you can go to this, it's just like saying you're sending somebody to LinkedIn. When people say, ah, what, what can I find your resume? Like, oh, I have a LinkedIn account that is very detailed, right? You can even use your LinkedIn account that is very detailed to document your journey if you don't want to use WordPress.com. I always tell people that uh, most of the things that you need are within reach. They are free. You don't have to spend extra time. You just need to practice. Practice, practice, practice. Take action. Because it's not enough to say, okay, you know what? I'll think about it. Maybe I will speak up. But no, reach out to your local organizer right now and tell them, you know what? I think I want to talk about how to do a particular thing with WordPress or how you can do this or how you can translate what, what whatever topic that you know that you've been practicing you're good at even if you have not been practicing it's something you can research on and you can implement and you can share take that action today don't wait so I have a couple of places uh, uh, uh articles that I link to for more reading um, I would say thank you for your interaction and I would encourage everybody to book a slot to speak at your local WordPress group right now. Reach out to Moses. Tell him you have something to share, even if it's for 15 minutes. Share. It starts from there. So uh, Moses, you had a couple of questions that you sent to me, uh, that you sent to me and you want me to address. Yeah. Because that, that ends my presentation. So I'm going to take them one by one and address them now, if that is okay. Do we still have time on the clock? How, do you know how much time we have on this clock? Uh, we have uh, for 14 minutes. 14 minutes, okay, great, great. That That's great. If I, I can't, uh, uh, okay, I think I should be able to. So uh, I, 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 I'm wondering if I should copy the questions and put it in the chat, but it doesn't matter. I can read them out. Yeah, sure, I'm going to copy them. Uh, so yeah, them. Okay, 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 great. So the first one says, what are some of the skills that are necessary for some that are necessary for someone who wants to become a successful public speaker and how can they develop these skills? The basic the basic the necessary item for you to do is to practice. If you watch my WordCamp uh Cape Town talk, you would wonder if somebody was 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 putting a fire on my ass because I was speaking so fast. So for me, speaking is like this big thing. I'm always afraid to get up on the podium to speak. Even when it's a virtual event, it took me a series of virtual events to be comfortable. I would say that the way I've spoken right at this meetup of yours is not how I would have spoken a while back. It would have been so fast, you'd have had to send me a message like, can you slow down? I think I think it's still fast, but I would say that I've improved a little because I would speak so fast and you'd wonder like, because I'm nervous and I'm like afraid, I would speak so fast and you'd be wondering like, why is she going so fast? And by the time she's done, I think a couple of the feedbacks that I got was, you need to slow down a bit. You need to slow down a bit. You need to take it down a lot. So I would say practice. And how do you practice? This goes back to what I talk about. You practice at your own local meetup events. Meetups and what comes are informal events. You need to feel safe enough. And I'm sure your organizers make your safe because every WordPress organizer makes sure that they abide by the WordPress rules, which says that you should make people feel as comfortable enough to share. Even if they don't have, even if they don't have that big expert, even if they make mistakes, even if somebody could be, we've had meetups where somebody will come up and say something. Like one time somebody said, oh, you can just go to Google and pick any picture and use it on your blog. And we told him that was wrong. And he was arguing with, and we went to bring out like to support, like see, this is the thing. We think it's normal for you to just go to Google and pick any picture and use. This is actually very wrong. Because a lot of people do it doesn't mean that it is right. So we, we backed it up with, references to show that is actual and persons that oh I never knew. So some people may not even know that they are saying something that is wrong. It is not our place to judge them and bring them down. It's our place to correct that assumption, the wrong assumption that they had. So for me I would say practice. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Practice makes perfect, right? If you don't practice, how are you going to become perfect? So I would say simply practice. 
Uh, the next question says, how do you tailor your, your, your presentations to the specific audience that you're speaking to and what factors do you take into consideration? That's actually very straightforward. So if you're speaking, if you are speaking in another uh, 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 tech community, for instance, and like a couple of speaking engagements I did were to women, it was, it was a room full of women. Uh, I think the one I did at Kampala was also to encourage women to speak at WordPress events. So when you're when you already know your audience, I mean, this particular meetup had been scheduled like a month, almost two months ago. So I already knew that I was speaking to uh, uh, male and female doing WordPress, right? You need to know your audience in advance, know the people that you're speaking to. That would allow you to tailor your, your talk and your, your, your presentation because when you're speaking, uh, if you're talking about something from a point of personal experience, you don't just pick all your personal experience. No, for, that's an example. You take something that you can key into what uh, you're speaking about. Like you, you tailor your talk towards that, something that the audience can pick from, something that the audience can uh, be happy to say, you know what, I learned something. I actually picked a point from that person. So you tailor your audience uh, based on, uh, you tell your talk based on the people that you're speaking to. If you're talking to just women, then you know that you're telling your talk to them. If it's both genders, then you know you're to uh, you're talking to uh, uh, both uh, genders. I hope I'm able to do justice to your questions, uh, Moses. Uh, the, the third one says, how do you answer difficult on, or unexpected questions from the audience during your presentation? And what advice would you give to somebody who is faced with a challenging question? See, it doesn't hurt anybody to say, I would get back to you on that. That's something that I learned the hard way. When you don't know something, instead of you to ramble on and say, you know, no, 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 don't try to bamboozle the crowd. Just simply state it. I would have to get back to you on the answer to that. That It's as simple as that. And anybody else who wants the answer can also meet you after the event. And by then you probably would have had time to think. If it's something you don't know, it doesn't hurt to say that hmm, I can't speak categorically on that right now, but I can get back to you on that later. That works. That's better than providing uh, a response or an answer that would be wrong in, in the field. And they'll be like, no, that person actually made a statement that was very wrong, which is better. Answering them later or answering them now and then being referred to as the person that made a statement that was wrong. So. I'm not able to speak on that right now. I'll get back to you later. That always works. Uh, some, so what next question is, what are some of the common mistakes that speakers make during their presentations? Common mistakes. Uh, okay. I would say uh, perhaps reading from your slide. <laughs> I am also very guilty, by the way. I did that in the early days. I think I probably did that at the WordCamp Cape Town, Cape Town uh, talk. If you go watch the video, I was literally, okay. No, I think for the first, yes, I remember for the first few minutes, I was reading from my slide. And then I told myself in my mind, like, wait, you're talking about your personal story. Why should you be reading from your slide? This is something that is in you. You already know what you want to talk about. And then I just got the courage and then I started speaking like that. I think that actually went. So if you're speaking in the early days or if you're just getting into speaking, you might find yourself reading from your slides. Try to uh, get better at that, right? So what I did to mitigate that was instead of to put in my slides, so like you see some slides, it look like a textbook. You'll be wondering, why is this slide looking like a textbook? So what I did instead was to highlight my points. I like the things I want to talk about. I already know what I want to talk about. It's in my head. I like them and then expand on them in my talk as opposed to reading them out on the screen. So that's a common mistake. And like I said, mm. practice makes perfect. I thought you wanted to say something. So the next question says, I can see the clock here, so I'm, I'm keeping that in mind. The next question says, um, can you share a particular memorable speaking experience that you had and what made it stand out to you? Again, that would most likely be my WordCamp Cape Town talk because I got a lot of feedback. I forgot to mention that in my, I got a lot of feedback. One of the ways that you can tell that you actually did a good job is the feedback that you that, that you get after. Like people come to you and they tell you, oh no, I could relate to this. Oh no, the, people give you feedback. I got a lot of feedback at that talk. So when you get a lot of feedback, 
that makes you happy. That makes you feel, I would say that it actually encouraged me to keep attempting to speak, even though, like I said, I was not, that, that encouraged me, the feedback that I got, I, I encouraged me to, to keep trying to speak at events. Now, that's not to say that if you don't get feedback, then you feel bad. No. For example, the first meetup that we did that we had, that I had three people show up. I mean, that you would feel like, oh my God, only three people. That that could make somebody feel bad. For me, but for me, I, I already had this uh, uh, thing in my head where I said, whether it's one person that shows up at a meetup or it's 10 people, my goal is to make sure that everybody leaves with something tangible. Everybody has a reason to come back. So I'm not bothered by the number of people that show up at meetups. I don't bother with that. For me, I believe if it is one person that you're able to impact, great. If there's one person you're able to share with, great. The most important thing is that the person actually got something at the end of it. So if you don't get feedback, you don't let that discourage you. The next time you do it, you get one feedback. And the next time, and the next time, because you keep when you keep doing something, you keep getting better and better and better every single time. Uh, the next question says, how do you balance the need to promote yourself as a speaker with the need to provide value to your audience and what strategies do you use to do so effectively? I mentioned this in my presentation. When you start speaking, if speaking is something you want to do professionally or not, when you start, always document your journey. Your, nobody is going to share your story. I always tell people, nobody would share your story for you. Nobody will share your work for you. It's If you don't put yourself out there, nobody is going to do it for you. So, like I said, whether you want to use a free WordPress.com account or you want to use a LinkedIn account or you want to use your personal website if you already have one, put it there. Let people see your work. Let them see this is what you can do and this is what you cannot do. Let them know that these are the topics you can speak on. You're the one who's going to push this out there. And when you have a talk, make sure it's if it's recorded, put a link to the published talk. I mean, what people say today, where can I find you on your works online? And you point them to a space where they can see an history of all the things that I've done. I even forgot to mention profiles.wordpress.org. That's actually another great place to showcase your WordPress expertise. In that, somebody, anybody who goes there can see uh, the list of things you've contributed to in WordPress, what you spend your time on. Uh, your, your, you can put your portfolio there. You can put a link to your site there. Somebody raising an app.